Hominidae is a taxonomic tribe that includes dozens of genus and species of human-like animals, such as Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis. When hominins began to make stone tools, they ceased being an animal chasing other animals and started on the path to becoming human. Nevertheless, sites where hominin fossils are directly associated with stone tool assemblages are rare, but studying both fossils and tools is critical for understanding hominin occupations throughout the Old World. As of now, no direct evidence of Neanderthals have been found in Africa, but this assumption may now have to change due to a recent discovery. According to a statement issued by the Max Planck Institute of Geoanthropology, an international team of scientists has conducted a new analysis of a tooth and stone tools discovered in Shukbar Cave, located in the Judean Mountains, less than 200 miles from Africa. The researchers discovered a molar from a Neanderthal child aged about nine, making the cave the southernmost known Neanderthal site. Furthermore, stone tools classified as Nubian Levalois type have been linked to the Neanderthal tooth. With a high concentration of cave sites containing evidence of past populations and their behavior, the Levant is a major center for human origins research. According to some experts, since Shukbar Cave is only 200 miles from Africa, Neanderthal dispersal into Africa is possible. Neanderthals may have traveled south into Africa at times, though no direct evidence of Neanderthal presence in Africa has ever been found. We have no direct evidence of a Neanderthal presence in Africa to date, but Shukbar's southerly location, only about 200 miles from Africa, should remind us that they may have dispersed into Africa at some point. Indeed, Le Valois tools, similar to those made by Neanderthals, have been discovered throughout North Africa, and some fossil skulls from Algeria and Morocco exhibit Neanderthal characteristics. If these Nubian tools were made by Neanderthals then, that opens up the possibility that Neanderthals also created the Nubian tools found along the Nile River in northwestern Africa. The Levant is a region in southwest Asia located south of the Taurus Mountains and bounded by the Mediterranean Sea to the west, the Arabian Desert to the south, and Mesopotamia to the east. The region stretches about 400 miles north to south, from the Taurus Mountains to the Sinai Desert, and east to west between the Mediterranean Sea. For over a century, archaeological excavations in the Levant have yielded human fossils and stone tool assemblages that reveal the landscapes inhabited by both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, indicating that this region may have served as a mixing ground for populations. Distinguishing these populations based solely on stone tool assemblages is difficult, but one technology, the distinctive Nubian Levalois method, is thought to have been developed exclusively by Homo sapiens. Neanderthals were found throughout northern and western Eurasian landscapes, but between 70,000 and 50,000 years ago, they spread southward into the Levant, which was previously inhabited by Homo sapiens during a warm period. Indeed, paleoanthropological research in the first half of the 20th century revealed alternate occupations of the Levant by Neanderthal and Homo sapiens populations, but key early findings were largely ignored in subsequent studies. In a new study, researchers presented new quantitative analyses of a hominin lower first molar and associated stone tool assemblage from Shukba Cave. The fossilized tooth of a nine-year-old child discovered in Shukba Cave represents the most southerly evidence of Neanderthals ever discovered. New archaeological evidence from the cave in the hills north of Jerusalem also suggests that Neanderthals used a stone tool-making technology previously thought to be unique to modern humans. Remarkably, the hominin tooth has strong Neanderthal characteristics, making it the southernmost known fossil specimen of this species. Furthermore, the associated Middle Paleolithic stone tool assemblage is dominated by Levalois reduction methods, which include Nubian Levalois points and cores. This site is the first direct link between Neanderthals and Nubian Levalois technology, demonstrating that this stone tool technology is not an exclusive marker of Homo sapiens, according to the report. British archaeologist Dorothy Garrard first excavated Shukbar Cave in the spring of 1928, discovering stone tools and animal bones cemented in cave deposits, as well as a unique large human molar tooth. The tooth was kept in a private collection for most of the 20th century, 
but it eventually made its way to the British Museum, where researchers were able to examine it again. They discovered that it belonged to a Neanderthal, aged between 7 and 12 years old. Homo sapiens and Neanderthals used a variety of stone tool technologies. In the past, it has been argued that Nubian Lavalois technology was exclusively used by Homo sapiens. This is the first time they've been discovered in direct association with a Neanderthal fossil, implying that there's no simple link between this technology and Homo sapiens. Sites with both hominin fossils directly associated with stone tool assemblages are rare. Studying both is critical to determining the hominin occupations of Shukba Cave and its place in the landscape. Dr. Chris Stringer, a human evolution expert at the British Museum, stated that there are two fascinating things about this discovery. For instance, we've long wondered if Neanderthals ever made their way to Africa. Shukba is less than 200 miles from Africa, so this discovery strengthens the possibility that they did make it there. Secondly, he says, the stone tools discovered there were thought to be the work of modern humans. But if this tooth reflects long-term occupation rather than sporadic visits, Neanderthals likely made similar tools. Thus, we have an association between a Neanderthal tooth and a tool industry considered typical of modern humans. In fact, examining the limits of the Neanderthal range is critical for determining these species' environmental tolerances, as well as investigating their ecological adaptability and behavioral flexibility. As stated, the confirmation of Neanderthal occupation at Shukba marks a significant southward expansion of this population's range, which is associated with diverse technological practices, as evidenced by the presence of the Nubian Levallois reduction method, among other Levallois techniques. What's more, these findings lend support to long-held theories about Neanderthal occupations at sites even further south, such as Tor Faraj and Tor Sabihar in southern Jordan near the Red Sea. Archaeologists believe that stylistic and manufacturing similarities also connect tools made in Egypt's Nile Valley and the Levant. These tools progressively grew smaller and more sophisticated. The toolkit, which dates back nearly 50,000 years, defines the transition between archaic and modern human behavior, at least in terms of tool making. But since the discovery of the first tools of this type, including points, blades and scrapers, in a cave near the Sea of Galilee, Archaeologists have been perplexed as to where this more advanced method of toolmaking originated. The evolution of stone tools in the region began in Egypt's Nile Valley, 150,000 to 130,000 years ago. These hunter-gatherers in Egypt created the Nubian tools by chipping away the edges of a stone core in a systematic manner, resulting in a single triangular point that could be attached to a spear. Early, modern humans along the Nile River and its tributaries created these triangular points by chipping away at the edges of a core. Later, modern humans in the Middle East developed a more efficient method for creating multiple points from a single core. According to one hypothesis, the climate in the Middle East began to become wetter and more humid around 60,000 years ago, attracting animals and hunters northward. Modern humans made a significant breakthrough in the Middle East. Instead of producing only one tool from a single stone by striking the core in one direction from top to bottom, as their ancestors did, they learned how to strike many elongated blades from the top and bottom of a single core in succession, a distinguishing feature of the Nubian Levallois and subsequent Upper Paleolithic tool industries. The Neanderthal occupation of the Levant has traditionally been associated with Mediterranean woodland habitats, where base camps appear to be situated within rough terrain and potentially resource-rich niches. But occupation in seemingly arid regions of Syria and Iran suggests greater behavioral flexibility in adapting to Southwest Asian ecologies. Shukba is currently the southernmost point of the Neanderthal range, highlighting the potential importance of this region of the Levant for studying interactions with modern human populations. Furthermore, the site may have served as an important stepping stone for Neanderthals as they expanded south into the arid landscapes beyond. The Middle East has numerous cave sites that contain evidence of ancient human ancestors. Fossils of both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals have been discovered, implying that this region may have served as a mixing ground for populations. 
Nonetheless, the extent to which either population used unique stone tool kits is debatable, with the distinct Nubian Levalois method thought to have been developed solely by Homo sapiens. Indeed, there is considerable debate about Nubian Levalois technology and its prominent attribution to Homo sapiens. The wide distribution of Nubian Levalois technologies across time, space, and technological contexts, as well as their low prevalence, call into question their usefulness as a reliable indicator of cultural inheritance. The appearance of Nubian Levalois technologies at Shukba, associated with Neanderthals and possibly at other sites, is best explained by technological convergence caused by a focus on Levalois point production. This is consistent with the significant overlaps observed between Nubian Levalois points and cores and other Levalois point production methods. Although this finding does not rule out the cultural inheritance of the Nubian Levalois method among Middle Paleolithic populations, it remains to be demonstrated and does not represent the most parsimonious explanation according to researchers. The findings show that any direct link between Nubian Levalois technology and Homo sapiens can no longer be assumed. In fact, in a bombshell revelation, researchers now propose that the modern humans who created the Nubian Levalois were influenced by Neanderthals, who left fossils around 70,000 to 50,000 years ago, as well as more primitive tools known as Mousterian. According to the scientists, Nubian Levalois tools are made in the same systematic manner as Egyptian Nubian tools, but they are very similar to the local Mousterian tools. The timing is also consistent with genetic studies indicating that modern humans interbred with Neanderthals when they arrived in the Middle East. For example, 55,000-year-old modern human skull discovered in Manot Cave in the Levant provides evidence that humans existed alongside Neanderthals. But not everyone believes that the Nubian Levalois hunter-gatherers' tool-making was influenced by their Neanderthal neighbours. Indeed, some anthropologists argue that the Nubian Levalois has nothing at all to do with Neanderthals. Lastly, Kafzi Cave is a prehistoric archaeological site located at the base of Mount Precipice in the Jezreel Valley of Lower Galilee, south of Nazareth. The stone tools discovered at the site, including side scrapers, disc cores and points, were of the Levalois Mousterian type. These tools are commonly associated with Neanderthal settlements. The Kafsi human remains show a combination of characteristics found in archaic and anatomically modern humans. They have been dated to between 80,000 and 120,000 years old. The brain structure is similar to modern humans, but they have brow ridges and a projecting facial profile like Neanderthals. The fossils were originally thought to be a transitional species between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans, or hybrids of the two, but it has been hypothesized that the Kafse hominids died out by 80,000 years ago due to drying and cooling conditions, allowing a return of a Neanderthal population, implying that the two types of hominids never interacted in the region. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.